and greetings friends. Today I want to talk to you about Titus, the third chapter, verse 5, that says this, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. And of course, a lot of people take this to mean that there are no works involved when it comes to salvation. We are justified by grace, not by works, as it says in Ephesians, the second chapter, verse 8. Now, I did a separate Bible misconception video on that particular scripture, and I'll put the link in the description below, and you can check that out as well. But a lot of people say there are no works involved, that it's all grace, you don't have to do anything, and that there are no works that a Christian should do. Is that what this scripture is telling us? Well, notice what it says here. It says here, not by works of righteousness, which we have done. That's our righteousness, not God's righteousness, which is, of course, his law. As it says, all thy commandments are righteousness, Psalm 119, 172 as opposed to the doctrines and commandments of men, which is sin and iniquity. And of course, Jesus Christ dealt with this, and you can read it in Matthew the 13th chapter, Matthew the 15th chapter, talking about the commandments and doctrines of men, men's way as opposed to God's way. And Isaiah, the prophet, talks about this in Isaiah the 64th chapter, verse 5, it says this, Thou meetest him that rejoiceth, and worketh righteousness, those that remember thee in thy ways. What's righteousness? God's law. And it's God's ways. Remember thee in thy ways. Worketh righteousness. Righteousness is God's law. It's God's way. Behold, thou art wroth, for we have sinned. In though we have sinned, that's men's ways, the doctrines and commandments of men. Then it goes back to God's law and says, in those, God's righteousness is continuance and we shall be saved. So if we continue in the law of God, we shall be saved. Notice verse 6. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. So our righteousness, the doctrines and commandments of men, is sin, contrary to God's righteousness, his way, which is his law. So that's what the Apostle Paul is saying basically here. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, our ways, the ways of men, which is sin. But it says, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. What happens when we receive the Holy Spirit? Well, Romans the fifth chapter, verse five says that the love of God is shed abroad on our hearts. What is the love of God? First John 5, 3. This is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And Isaiah says, if we continue in these ways, God's ways, we shall be saved. And that's what the apostle Paul is saying here. He says, but according to his mercy. Now, what is mercy? Well, when we see in Psalm 25, 10, it says, All the paths of the Lord is mercy. And of course, the Hebrew word is chesed, and the equivalent is here mercy, which is elios in the Greek. It's the same word in Greek and Hebrew. And then it says, And truth unto such as keep his covenant and testimonies. And what are the paths of the Lord? It's the paths of righteousness, Psalm 23 verse 3. And of course, righteousness is God's law. Psalm 119, 172. It talks about in Proverbs 2, 8, the paths of judgment and uprightness. Uh, Proverbs 2, 13. And when you look at Micah, the fourth chapter, verse 2, it talks about the paths of the Lord and it's his law. So it says here, all the paths of the Lord is mercy. That's God's law. And when you look at the second commandment, mercy is ingrained in the very commandment of God, the second commandment, where he talks about keeping mercy unto thousands who keep his commandments. So if we continue to keep in his, if we continue to keep his commandments and we stumble and fall as a Christian and we ask for forgiveness because we are continually repentant and want to keep God's law, God will show us mercy. It's ingrained in the second commandment in the law of God. And it says here that he saved us. The first commandment in the law of God is to believe on your Savior. 
The very first commandment talks about God our Savior, which is pretty much the theme of this book. Now notice verse 6. Which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Lord, which is of course the Holy Spirit. God shed the Holy Spirit, shed abroad in our hearts, and of course the love of God is in our hearts, keeping his commandments through the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. That being justified by his grace, and what is grace? Psalm 119.29, the NIV version of the Bible, when you look at it, it says, Be gracious to me through your law. That God's law is grace. That keeping it is faith. And what does it say in uh, Romans, the second chapter, verse 13? The doers of the law shall be justified. So we are justified by his grace, which is God's law. His way, not our way. We should be made heirs according to to the hope of eternal life. And as Isaiah says, and even Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in Matthew the 19th chapter, verse 17, he says, If you are to enter into life, keep the commandments. Luke the 10th chapter, verse 25 through 28, says the same thing. What, what must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus says, What does the law say? And it says, and then he says, To love your neighbor as yourself and to love God. And what is the love of God? Keeping his commandments. So then it says this. So we are justified by his grace, which is God's law. We should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. And then it says, this is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. People say that we don't need works to be saved, but here the Apostle Paul says that we must maintain good works. As Isaiah says, we must continue in God's ways, God's righteousness, the saving works of God. So there are works, God's works, not our works. This is what the Apostle Paul is telling us here, that we must maintain good works, continue in them, as the a prophet Isaiah said, continue in them, and we shall be saved. So to say that this scripture proves that uh, there are no works involved and we don't have to keep God's law is just another Bible misconception.